Morning, how's it going? Rick T Outdoor Adventure and Billy. We're out in uh, Woods and Fields again this morning. Complete change in weather. It's been uh, a bit wet overnight, which is great for what we're going to do today. So, a bit of skills practice, a bit of a challenge. So, while we're in this uh, lockdown thing, you're right, Billy Bobs. While we're in this lockdown thing and everything, we'll have, uh, we'll have a bit of a challenge. So, I'm always out practicing fire skills and bits and pieces and bits of survival stuff and what have you. And I came to thinking this week I was doing stuff and it was like, well, what if you're injured? What if you're carrying an injury at the same time? So, and it'd be easy to get an injury in a survival situation. For example, you're on a canoeing trip and uh, you run a rapid that's slightly bigger than you thought it was going to be. Or there's that unexpected rock in the middle. You get pushed onto it, it flips your boat, you take a swim. Yep. All your kit disappears down the river. Yep, you get pinned on a rock, the boat bounces against you, breaks your arm, snaps your fingers, and floats off. Yep, you manage to swim to the shore. Your kit's disappeared. All you've got left on you is what you're wearing and what you're carrying. Yeah? Same scenario in the mountains, you've got your rucksack on, you're negotiating a a deep gully, you slip off the edge, you bounce down, hit a few rocks on way down into the river. Yep, you're starting to drown, you just have to take your rucksack off to, su to survive, to get to the side. Your rucksack disappears, you broke your arm in the process. Yep. So, I mean, there's a million and one scenarios, you could break all sorts of things, you could read all sorts of things in it. But just for today, for the exercise, and I'm going to tag a few people and see if you fancy doing it. We're going to say, you broke your arm. You brought your upper arm and your fingers, yeah? So neither of them are, are any use, yeah? All you've got is the kit on you, right? Now again, people carry all sorts of different, people carry pouches on their, on their packs with first aid kits in or fire kits, everything else. We're going to say you're carrying, a, as a minimum, you're carrying, you've got your knife on your belt and you've got a ferro rod, yeah? Quite often people have the ferro rods in the sheath of the knife, so they're going to have them together, yeah, other people carry them around the neck or in the pocket, etc. But quite often, you've got those two things on you. I know I generally have those two things on me, yeah? And uh, so that's what we're going to go with today, yeah? So, first thing, you snap your arm. Shit, it's, you know what I mean? It's going to be giving you some grief in it. You're not going to want to concentrate about surviving, getting a fire going, etc. Your arm's broken, it. It's a mess. So what do you need to do with that arm? You need to support it. But as we've said, all your kits disappeared down the river, yeah, or wherever, wherever this incident's happened. You've lost your kit, yeah. You might have run away from a bloody grizzly bear and jumped in a river or whatever, you know, and lost your kit. But yeah, you've got this broken arm to deal with. It's snapped to you. Your fingers are broke. Because it snapped to you, the weight's pulling it down, it's opening that wound up, it's going to hurt, you're going to need to support this arm. So what we're going to do today, is we're going to get a fire going with this minimal kit. Yep, it's a bit wet today, so it's ideal for training purposes. Yep, we could take it further into we need to build shelter, we need to find water, we need to find food. There could be further episodes with this broken arm. But for now, we're going to get a fire going. So a few tips and tricks along the way. First job, we've no kit, yep, we're not going to start making stuff out of the undergrowth, yep, it's getting late, I'm cold, I'm wet, I'm tired, I need a fire going, yep, I need to keep warm. I'm going to get this blooming arm sorted. What can I use? I can use what's on me. I've got my knife, but I ain't going to start cutting stuff up because I'm going to need this clothing. So, your best bet, remember, this arm's knackered. From now on, I can't use that left arm. So everything becomes a chore. Everything becomes hard work. Everything's like a straight jacket. Well, I ain't gonna do any acting and wincing with pain and stuff like that, but It's a brilliant exercise to try. So 
I'm down to my t-shirt. So what we're going to do, we're going to use this t-shirt. Ah, I said I weren't going to act. So first job, get your arms out. There's a couple of ways you can do this. Put it back over your head with one. And then your other side. Hook that in. Straight away, we've got a sling. You can tidy it up a bit, tuck a few bits and pieces in. But straight away, you've got a decent sling. Yep, that's giving it quite a bit of support. Get the rest of your kit on to stay warm. Again, even just putting me, even just putting this jumper on, I can feel a bit more support straight away. Now it's funny when you try this, try it, because you find all sorts of things out that you didn't think you would. Like how do I do this zip up now? I can't. But luckily with this jacket, it's got buttons on it. So I can button it up. It's definitely an exercise worth trying. It's warming up actually out here. I don't need this jacket in a bit. But the pockets are handy. Because what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to have to find tinder and find the resources to make a fire. And like I say, it's been a bit wet overnight. So, these pockets are going to come in bloody handy because I've not got two hands to hold stuff in. I've only got this one hand. Yep, so I'm going to be utilising my pockets. Right, let's go and sort some fire out. Now, to source fire, I need, for me, you know which sort of trees work for you and what sort of trees you can see in that environment. So if you can uh, recognise trees from a distance, you've always got an advantage. If you can look from 500 metres away or whatever into the distance, into a forest, and you can spot the shapes of trees and recognise them, whether that's uh, pines for pine pitch and stuff like that, or whether that's birch trees, you can recognise the colour, and the pattern of them for your birch bark and stuff like that. These are all resources that you ideally want to be able to recognise from a long distance away so you're not wasting time wandering around the forest. You can go straight to that resource. Found a decent spot for my fire. I hope you can see alright, it's a little bit dark when it forest, it's starting drizzling again. So I've got some protection. We found some cattails on the way in. 
So again, good flash tinder. So just keep your eyes open for what you're walking past. Yeah. Shove them there. I'm going to gather some bits and pieces and bring them back here. And I'm going to do, do my processing in the spot where I'm going to light my fire. So if I drop anything, it's in the right location. Just like I say, with one hand, it's going to be hard messing about. So I'm going to get some dry wood and bits and pieces. Gold dust. And another tip, we're generally got a southwesterly wind, yeah. So the rain is generally coming in on a southwesterly, generally, not all the time, yeah. Which is over there. So if I pick on the back side of this tree, it's, ge it's generally going to be drier when it's been raining than this side of the tree. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm shoving them all in this pocket. This is going to be the pocket where I process my material. I can't do it out here because I'll drop it. It's got to be contained in that pocket. I've not got two hands to do it, so bang. Standing dead wood is always the best. Not easy with one arm though. Look for something that can help you with the mechanics of breaking up. Because remember, you've only got that one arm, it's not as easy. Set with base as usual. I'm going to give myself as much of an advantage as possible. There's other ways of doing it, but that way works to some extent. Now you've got to be real careful. I'm holding this knife in with my ribs. But there is potential for it to drop out and land in your foot. So you could do this on the floor with the knife upright in a log. 
I prefer doing it this way. But knives are dangerous enough when you've got two hands. The last thing you want in a survival situation is to slice your good hand. I'm going to do, I'm just going to pin that in a bit. I'm actually just going to stop that wood moving. These are all the little bits you've got to think about when working. the knife in there. Now on about uh, all that tinder in your pocket. If it's in my pocket I can scrunch it all up in there like you would normally do between your hands. I've got to use my pocket. So a pocket's blooming handy. Even if it was just your pant pocket, whatever. Your pant pocket might be easier to some extent. But I had my jacket on at the time, so... Give that a good scrunch up. It's not been the easiest to make uh, feather sticks in this forest, because a lot of this wood's very, uh, very punky. So... Got to use what you've got to use, haven't you? What's available? Right. Give that a good mix up. There. A good pile. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Very finely all mixed up. Right. So, get that in there. Ah, this is a little bit... These cattails are not the best stuff today. They're a little bit wet. But, the more chance we've got, the more bits and pieces we've got on there, the better chance we've got. Bits of feather sticks and small sticks at the ready. Now what I don't want to do is spark from up here. It'll just pull the knife out. So what I need to do is spark from down below. I'm going to put my foot on it, hold it in place. Bang that knife in nice and tight. Everything's a little bit a little bit damp, but it'll go. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, we're on it. Get me a little sticks on. Knife back in me, uh, 
from the holster. Ferro rod back in my pocket. Don't want to lose either of them. There we have it. Fire with one hand. It's not as easy as it looks. Just the simple stuff. Yeah, I mean it's been air graft even moving this camera about with one arm and trying to set it. It's been air graft, hasn't it, Billy? But uh, yeah, it's a great skill to practice and it just uh, sort of lets you know the difficulties. Do you know what I mean? It highlights those simple little things like all you have to do. He's breaking hand or a few fingers or an arm or something or a leg or whatever and everything becomes so much harder <coughs> so it's a great skill to practice so you know and it's just fun as well it's a bit entertaining having a go at it so what I do so I'm gonna tag a few people we'll start a tag running if you fancy it you don't have to do it but if you fancy it why not so and survive the night I know you're loving your bushcraft and you're getting out learning new things all the time so have a do Ant, have a do uh, Jimmy go on Jimmy Lundy uh, bushcraft and uh, wild camping let's see Jimmy do it as well I know Jimmy loves the tag so and also how about uh, Captain Bushcraft off Instagram I know you're not on uh, YouTube Captain but uh, have a do on Instagram just have a go at it <coughs> and the uh, stipulation is the rules are you've got to use uh, a fire steel and a knife that's the only two things you can use you've got to get your tinder out in the field you can't take it with you and see what you can do lads yeah and see if you can do it slightly different than me lads see if you can think of something else another way One thing I would say though is be careful with them knives with one hand. It uh, makes things a little bit more dangerous. But like it's all good stuff. Another thing, get some outdoor first aid or read up on it. Yep, try and learn some stuff. Yep, before shit happens. Even if it's simple stuff, breakages and cuts and contusions and uh, stuff like that. Try and learn a bit of stuff. Make sure you have a decent first aid kit on a wilderness trip. If you don't, <clears throat> make sure you've got the knowledge upstairs to deal with it. There's quite a bit of plant life and stuff like that that you can use for painkillers and things like that. There's quite a few around here. We might look at that some other time. Anyway, thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, I hope you engage with the tag and enjoy doing it if you do it. But I say be careful with them knives. Look after yourselves anyway. Alright, thanks a lot everybody. See you ladies. Ta-da.